A race against time as rescuers search for survivors of the Mexico earthquake. We'll be live in Mexico City with the latest on the rescue effort. Also this lunchtime. Good afternoon. Welcome to the BBC News at One. Rescuers in Mexico City are trying to reach a number of people they believe are still alive under the rubble of a school which collapsed during Tuesday's earthquake. A senior official has told the BBC a 13-year-old girl is sheltering under a table in the debris and that crews have managed to pass food and water to her. The government has appealed to other countries to provide specialist teams and equipment to help the search for survivors. Rajini Vaidyanathan reports from Mexico City. Here, Theresa May chaired an unusually long cabinet meeting this morning to discuss a major speech about Brexit, which she'll deliver in Florence tomorrow. Mrs May has insisted that the government is working together to get the best deal for Britain, despite the Foreign Secretary Boris Johnson setting out his own vision for the country once it's left the EU in a recent newspaper article. Our political correspondent Ian Watson reports. Ryanair's chief executive Michael O'Leary has admitted a significant management failure at the airline and says more flights may have to be cancelled. A group of Ryanair pilots has rejected an offer of a bonus of up to £12,000 each to work extra shifts and so help reduce the number of cancellations. Our business correspondent Theo Leggett has more. A sixth arrest has been made by police investigating last week's attack on a London underground train. The Football Association is facing heavy criticism following the sacking of the England women's manager Mark Sampson. The sports minister Tracy Crouch has described the situation as a mess after Sampson was sacked for what the FA called inappropriate behaviour in a previous coaching job in Bristol. Our sports correspondent Katie Gornall reports. Hurricane Maria is continuing on its path of devastation across the Caribbean and is now hitting the Dominican Republic. It made a direct hit on Puerto Rico, leaving the whole island without power. Homes have been destroyed and catastrophic flooding has been reported. A curfew has been imposed on the three and a half million people who live there. Our correspondent Richard Lister reports. People wanting to give up smoking are to be officially advised to try e-cigarettes, despite a lack of evidence about their long-term effect. Public Health England is to include e-cigarettes in its annual Stop Smoking campaign for the first time. The body says they can be helpful for people who want to give up. Jenny Walrand reports. Ten army instructors have appeared in court charged with abusing recruits on a training camp. They all denied the charges, which include battery, assault and ill treatment of junior soldiers under the age of 18. Our correspondent Dan Johnson is at Bulford Military Court in Wiltshire. Explain what's been happening, Dan. An inquest into the death of the Moors murderer Ian Brady has been reopened. Brady, who along with Myra Hindley, tortured and killed five children, died at Ashworth Hospital last year at the age of 79. An earlier inquest heard he died from obstructive pulmonary disease. Our correspondent Robert Hall is in Bootle Robert. Now, nearly half of fridges and freezers on the market have flammable plastic backs. That's according to research by the consumer group Which. Uh, they're advising people to stop buying them and are asking manufacturers to stop making them because of the potential fire risk. Three years after Prince Harry founded the Invictus Games, the UK's biggest team yet is on its way to Canada to compete in this year's event. The athletes will be joining more than 500 men and women from 17 nations who've served in the military and have been wounded in action. Our correspondent Tim Muffet has been to meet members of the British team. And just a reminder of our main story here this lunchtime. That is all from the BBC News at one. It is goodbye from me. And on BBC One, we join the BBC's news teams wherever you are. Have a good afternoon.